the standard RAID levels are a basic set of RAID configurations that employ the techniques of striping, mirroring, or parity to create large reliable data stores from general purpose computer hard disk drives. The most common types today are Reader 0, Reader 1 and Variants, Reader 5 and Reader 6. RAID levels and their associated data formats are standardized by the Storage Networking Industry Association in the Common RAID Disk Drive Format Standard. RAID 0 A Reader 0 splits data evenly across two or more disks without parity information for speed. Reader 0 was not one of the original RAID levels and provides no data redundancy. Reader 0 is normally used to increase performance, although it can also be used as a way to create a large logical disk out of two or more physical ones. A Reader 0 can be created with disks of differing sizes, but the storage space added to the array by each disk is limited to the size of the smallest disk. For example, if a 100 GB disk is striped together with a 350 GB disk, the size of the array will be 200 GB. The diagram shows how the data is distributed into AX stripes to the disks. Accessing the stripes in the order A1, A2, A3 provides the illusion of a larger and faster drive. Once the stripe size is defined on creation it needs to be maintained at all times. Performance Reader 0 is also used in areas where performance is desired and data integrity is not very important, for example in some computer gaming systems. Although some real-world tests with computer games showed a minimal performance gain when using Reader 0, albeit with some desktop applications benefiting, another article examined these claims and concluded, striping does not always increase performance, but in most situations it will yield a significant improvement in performance. RAID 1 An exact copy of a set of data on two disks. This is useful when RAID performance or reliability is more important than data storage capacity. Such an array can only be as big as the smallest member disk. A classic Reader 1 mirrored pair contains two disks. RAID 2 A Reader 2 stripes data at the bit level, and uses a ham code for error correction. The disks are synchronized by the controller to spin at the same angular orientation so it generally cannot service multiple requests simultaneously. Extremely high data transfer rates are possible. This is the only original level of RAID that is not currently used. All hard disks eventually implemented humming code error correction. This made Reader 2 error correction redundant and unnecessarily complex. This level quickly became useless and is now obsolete. There are no commercial applications of Reader 2. RAID 3 a Reader 3 uses byte-level striping with a dedicated parity disk. Reader 3 is very rare in practice. One of the characteristics of Reader 3 is that it generally cannot service multiple requests simultaneously. This happens because any single block of data will, by definition, be spread across all members of the set and will reside in the same location. So, any I.O. operation requires activity on every disk and usually requires synchronized spindles. This makes it suitable for applications that demand the highest transfer rates in long sequential reads and writes, for example uncompressed video editing. Applications that make small reads and writes from random disk locations will get the worst performance out of this level. The requirement that all disks spin synchronously, a.k.a. lockstep, added design considerations to a level that didn't give significant advantages over other RAID levels, so it quickly became useless and is now obsolete. Both Reader 3 and Reader 4 were quickly replaced by Reader 5. Reader 3 was usually implemented in hardware, and the performance issues were addressed by using large disk caches. RAID 4 A Reader 4 uses block-level striping with a dedicated parity disk. In the example on the right, a read request for block A1 would be serviced by disk 0. A simultaneous read request for block B1 would have to wait, but a read request for B2 could be serviced concurrently by disk 1. Reader 4 is very uncommon, but one enterprise-level company that has previously used it is NetAPP. The aforementioned performance problems were solved with their proprietary Write Anywhere file layout an approach to writing data to disk locations that minimizes the conventional parity RAID write penalty. 
by storing system metadata in the same way application data is stored, WAFL is able to write file system metadata blocks anywhere on the disk. This approach in turn allows multiple writes to be gathered and scheduled to the same RAID strip peer euro eliminating the traditional read modify write penalty prevalent in parity based RAID schemes. RAID 5 A reader 5 comprises block level striping with distributed parity. Unlike in RAID 4, parity information is distributed among the drives. It requires that all drives but one be present to operate. Upon failure of a single drive, Subsequent reads can be calculated from the distributed parity such that no data is lost. Reader 5 requires at least three disks. RAID 6 Reader 6 extends Reader 5 by adding an additional parity block. Thus it uses block level striping with two parity blocks distributed across all member disks. Performance Reader 6 does not have a performance penalty for read operations but it does have a performance penalty on write operations because of the overhead associated with parity calculations. Performance varies greatly depending on how Reader 6 is implemented in the manufacturer storage architecture or Euro and software, firmware or by using firmware and specialized ASICs for intensive parity calculations. It can be as fast as a RAID 5 system with one fewer drive. Implementation According to the Storage Networking Industry Association, the definition of Reader 6 is, any form of RAID that can continue to execute read and write requests to all of a RAID array's virtual disks in the presence of any two concurrent disk failures. Several methods, including dual check data computations, orthogonal dual parity check data and diagonal parity, have been used to implement RAID Level 6. Computing parity Two different syndromes need to be computed in order to allow the loss of any two drives. One of them, P can be the simple XOR of the data across the stripes, as with Reader 5. A second, independent syndrome is more complicated and requires the assistance of field theory. To deal with this, the Gawler's field is introduced with, where for a suitable irreducible polynomial of degree. A chunk of data can be written as in base 2 where each is either 0 or 1. This is chosen to correspond with the element in the Gawler's field. Let correspond to the stripes of data across hard drives encoded as field elements in this manner. If a sum generator of the field and denotes addition in the field while concatenation denotes multiplication, then and may be computed as follows. For a computer scientist, a good way to think about this is that is a bitewise XOR operator and is the action of a linear feedback shift register on a chunk of data. Thus, in the formula above, the calculation of P is just the XOR of each stripe. This is because addition in any characteristic two finite field reduces to the XOR operation. The computation of Q is the XOR of a shifted version of each stripe. Mathematically, the generator is an element of the field such that is different for each non-negative satisfying. If one data drive is lost, the data can be recomputed from P just like with Reader 5. If two data drives are lost or a data drive and the drive containing P are lost, the data can be recovered from P and Q or from just Q, respectively, using a more complex process. Working out the details is extremely hard with field theory. Suppose that and are the lost values with. Using the other values of constants and may be found so that and. Multiplying both sides of the equation for by and adding to the former equation yields and thus a solution for, which may be used to compute. The computation of Q is CPU intensive compared to the simplicity of P. Thus, a reader 6 implemented in software will have a more significant effect on system performance, and a hardware solution will be more complex. Comparison, the following table provides an overview of some considerations for standard RAID levels. In each case, array space efficiency is given as an expression in terms of the number of drives. This expression designates a fractional value between 0 and 1, representing the fraction of the sum of the drive's capacities that is available for use. For example, if three drives are arranged in reader 3, this gives an array space efficiency of thus, if each drive in this example has a capacity of 250 GB, 
then the array has a total capacity of 750 a GB but the capacity that is usable for data storage is only 500 a GB. Array failure rate is given as an expression in terms of the number of drives, and the drive failure rate, and can be seen to be a Bernoulli trial. For example, if each of three drives has a failure rate of 5% over the next three years, and these drives are arranged in reader 3, then this gives an array failure rate over the next three years of non-standard RAID levels and non-RAID drive architectures. Alternatives to the above designs include nested RAID levels, non-standard RAID levels, and non-RAID drive architectures. Non-RAID drive architectures are referred to by similar acronyms, notably SLED, just a bunch of disks, span big, and made. Notes. References. External links. RAID calculator for standard RAID levels and other RAID tools. IBM Summary on RAID Levels, Reader 5 Parity Explanation and Checking Tool, Animations and Details on RAID Levels 0, 1, and 5, The Open E Blog. How Does Reader 5 Work? The Shortest and Easiest Explanation Ever.